Hello guys, it's Unders. I hope the day is finding you well. So, Logic have dropped a nice little update for Winter Nam 2018 and uh, it's uh, got a whole bunch of new features in as well as some improvements. And I have just downloaded that and I'm just having a play around with some of the new stuff inside. Just a quick side note, if you are seeing this for the first time, just hearing about it and getting super excited, if you want to go and download the latest Logic update, it does not work with El Capitan. So you need to be on Sierra and onwards from El Capitan to be able to download and use it. So with that out of the way, we are going to have a look at Chroma here. Now Chroma is a new reverb that's been added and uh, it's pretty damn stunning. What it is, it's um, a few different algorithms that are going to grab different types of room sound and it's taken all the difficulty in setting up a good reverb sound out and it sounds stunning. So if you guys have followed the Logic tutorials, which I assume most of you would have, I show a lot about setting up timings and things like that with compressors and definitely reverb. So how to work out your musical timing and make it relevant in your track. This has got it just set up for you so you can just tweak it and you're straight to what you need. So just to quickly go over the layout, right at the top we've got this big orange bit that says room. That is actually our preset selector. As you'll see there is nothing in here. If we click that we get our different types here. So we have room, chamber, concert hall, theatre, synth hall, digital, dark room, dense, smooth space, vocal hall, reflective hall, strange room, airy and boomy. Pretty much going to cover most of the room types you would want considering they're all flexible and you can adjust size, density, decay, etc. So that's really useful. Moving over, we have main, which is the window we're on now. Then we have details. Details introduces an EQ post the effect. And as you can see, you can change the quality, mod depth, etc. Our parameters at the bottom down here have changed. We're going to ignore that for the minute and we're going to work with the main window. So in the center here, we've got what looks to be a frequency analyzer. And it is, but it's a whole different type of thing going on. What I'm going to do is play some sound now, but I'm going to take the sound out and just explain to you what's going on on the screen. So we can see like this fountain of frequency going on and what this is doing, it's splitting up our band into our low, low mids, mids, through to high mids and our high frequency in the colors of the rainbow, red through to violet, purple, pink, whatever you want to call it at the end there. And each little particle that's coming off here, it's giving us that is the reverb sound that's being made and how long it's holding for. And all the cloudiness around it is the dispersion, the diffusion of those little sound particles. If we take the decay down, we just get the little sound particles. They don't disperse, they fade away really quickly. If we crank this right up, they take a really long time to disperse and it gets really cloudy. Exactly how you would describe a reverb where it gets muddy, there's too much frequency. So let's bring that right back down here. So you see now they disperse and they disperse within a specific, and they disperse within a specific time based on the decay. That's really useful in the representation it gives you. You can look at it and, and go, cool, I've got a nice clear reverb. There's all these areas going on and this is how it's responding. I've got some low frequency that I don't really want. I can get rid of that, etc. Um, this is far too muddy. There's lots going on. This is my problem. It's just a nice visual representation of what's going on with the reverb. Now across the bottom, we've got attack, size and density. Density, relatively self-explanatory, it's how many reflections you're going to get. Size is the size of the room, so how long is it going to take for those sounds to come back and they're going to reflect after a long way? Do they lose frequency as they're traveling over a longer distance, etc.? Attack is how quick it hits the walls and comes back or hits the first object, so you get your first reflections. Now, most of the time, so that's going to be set in milliseconds, and I've shown you previously how to work that out in milliseconds by using our lovely inspector over here, using the delay section, and based on your tempo, it will give you the calculations here. However, now we can select this little note and it's gonna give us them and just work them out without us having to look it up and type it in in milliseconds, which is just amazing. 
Going over to decay, we've got exactly the same thing, except it's the decay over time. So we can work that out in different divisions here, or we can put it back into what we'd like in terms of seconds and have it decay over an entire minute. Um, there is this feature below called freeze. I'm going to demo what that does shortly after. We have distance, self-explanatory, and our wet dry. So how much of the dry signal is coming through, how much of the wet signal is coming through. Now I've put this directly on these particular sounds. So we need the dry signal to come through, but on a bus, you would have it set up as such. For example, directly on the sound, this is what's working for the minute. And this is the default when you drag it onto an audio output. Let's have a quick listen to what it's doing. I've just got it in a guitar loop here and I'm just gonna play around with some of the settings and you can really have a listen to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is play it with and then turn it off just so you hear the massive difference that this currently makes. Um, I think that's how it was set up. Let's roll with it. As you can hear, it's a stunning, stunning sounding reverb. I'm, I'm gonna be using this hell of a lot. It's so versatile. And in the type of music I make, which is really quick paced drum and bass, a lot of the time, um, like timing and things like that needs to be impeccable. And this is just gonna be time saving for me. Now let's just have a quick look at that freeze and what that is currently doing. So it's a feature that I would usually automate and I would do that to make some crazy sound effect. Um, so what we can do is take all of the sounds and freeze it at a point in time. So let's have a little listen here to our loop and we'll use the freeze. And you can see it's frozen all the particles and they're just moving around in their space. And that's just an awesome effect you can uh, have a play around with there and create some crazy tonal drones really easily. And I just wanted to demo it on a vocal real quick for you guys as well, just so you can get a vibe of how that's going. So we've just got a vocal loaded up here and we'll grab that other version of Chroma. And I've put it on the vocal hall rather than the room. We're not gonna listen to all of them. You guys can grab Logic and do that yourself. Um, let's just have a listen to how this is affecting the vocal. So obviously it's on, I'm gonna take it away. It's a completely dry vocal, by the way, recording in a very dry room. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. The harder I try, the more I find. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. The harder I try, the more I find. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. The harder I try, the more I find. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. The harder I try, the more I find. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. The harder I try, the more I find. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. The harder I try, the more I find. Boy, I can't seem to get you off of my mind. Beautiful. So guys, that is a quick introduction Introduction to the new chroma verb. Not what I thought I was going to be the most excited about, but I really think it is. I was really excited to see the pull tech uh, EQ come in there. And I'm definitely going to do a comparison of that. You guys should know that I love and adore the pull tech EQs. I use it on everything for a high lift. And uh, 
yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is pretty awesome. I will look to do a more in-depth tutorial for you guys and we'll cover the quality, mod speed and all of the other functionality in there. But as a quick overview, that is it for you guys. It is stunning. So if you are not an El Capitan and you're above that, download it, get rolling with it and uh, let me know what you think. See you on the next video, guys.